Hello everyone, it's Kaizuka here. Today I'm gonna react to the main man's video about loss. And actually before I start, I want to tell you this because this, this is very important. Like I'm not even joking, this is important. Everyone, when it comes to these things, everyone has their own opinion. Like I've seen in the Tekken community a lot of stuff where experienced players, even like the best of the best, say things. And people don't agree with it, like other pro players don't agree with it. So therefore, before I start the video, just keep that in mind. Just because he says something I don't agree with or I agree with, doesn't mean it is right or wrong. So let everyone have their opinion. Don't hate anyone for, I don't know, not agreeing with the change or something. And um, yeah, many people ask about my opinion about this and I will just give you I will just react to it and yeah give you my opinion on that so let's just start when you think he's gonna pull the trigger step right up you can f Lars up the for being lazy with that stuff but you're not being lazy you're doing this <laughs> do it later Alejo that's fine uh, by the way, I'm also streaming right now, so I'm talking to the chat as well. Shout out to my and chat. Lars is just... Lars is a slap in the face. La Lars... A slap in the I face. Mean, I mean, I don't know what's worse about this patch. Is it the Kazia nerf or is it the Lars bop? The Kazia... Lars hold on. The Kazia nerf? The Kazia got nerfed? Can someone tell me in the chat if Kazia got nerfed? And if so, what? Because I don't remember seeing something about Kazia. Some to be monkey honest. character in this game. Uh, it's very easy to operate and pilot him the amount of counterplay you have to monkey flip is uh pre very very little very little hmm. let's just start from scratch let's say a lars is trying to mix you up he's right about the monkey thing with orbital and monkey flip heavens get ender now only does one damage oh, okay okay i see I you didn't know that. this about a million times so far if you've played against the Lars. Mm -hmm. Akuma Lars, basically. In any other Tekken game, you, you would sidewalk this right. But for some reason, Lars, even when he jumps uh, linear towards you, he'll spin around midair and grab you by the head or your hair. Yes, he does that. So that monkey flip is homing. Immediately, I'm like, this makes no logical sense. And it makes your character... It just removes uh, basic counterplay. Okay. So now to deal with this, you gotta right, do on. something super awkward that most people can't do. You step right into a duck. When you think he's gonna pull the trigger, step right up. Okay. He is... See. If I'm getting it right... He's um, complaining about that uh, the throw is a homing and the option you had to like sights of right duck last and beat most of the options is not possible anymore. Like not sights of right duck. He's saying like sights of right in general. Uh, the homing will catch you the, the grab. See that is a problem. That is kind of a problem. But it's not a last problem. It's like a problem in the game. Because homing throws are like an actual thing in this game and therefore every character with like throws uh, That's just a, just a game problem, not a last problem um, That makes last obviously more annoying, but um, What about the other characters like King as a, as a character with like a lot of throws is actually way more scarier now but at the same time having homing throws uh, can you can use it as an advantage as well to beat like Yoshimitsu's uh, flip when he's like spinning around and you know tries to like await some stuff you can like grab him out so you can see it as an advantage as a disadvantage I think it's not good in the game me personally I think homing grabs shouldn't be a thing but um, it's not like a change that it's it is made for Lars it's just a change for the game and Lars just benefits from it um however i don't think that it's that is a real threat like you can still sidewalk right and beat most of the options the reward you're getting for it is huge and the risk for you for you is to get hit by the grab but even if you get hit by the grab 
there is nothing guaranteed. You can still plus one, one plus two, which is not too hard. Okay, if you think about like lower level, beginner level, it might be annoying. But let's be honest, if you if you look at the beginner levels or lower levels, there, there are a million characters where you just, you know, get ran over and... Yeah, I don't know, there's a Link doing stuff or a Victor just spinning around and teleporting. That's the same thing. Like, when you look at the lower levels, it's the same thing with, like, other characters. It's just annoying. But um, if you look at higher levels, you just step to the right. If you see the flip and Lars is grabbing you, you press, you press 1 plus 2. That's it. Like, there's no... He doesn't have multiple options from that. It's always a 1 plus 2. So I don't think that's something that is too annoying, in my opinion. Like, when I play against Lars, obviously he's my main, but I, I never see that as a problem. For me, that's fine. And you can actually kill both of these options. You can fuck Lars up the ass for being lazy with that stuff. <laughs> but you're not being lazy, you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard to do. Isn't every grab homing? Yes, every grab is homing. That's the thing. That's why I... What I was trying to say, like, it's not a last problem here or a last change. It's a, it's a problem, like, a general problem of the game. Uh, grabs being homing. Dude, you can't expect most people to be able to do this stuff. And then there is this situation, which is torture when he does uh, garbage ent okay, sushi entry. Okay, now it's the real right? thing. He does sushi entry sushi <laughs> into rebar kick. This one. Now, straight up, I completely disagree with this attack because sushi entry removes every counterplay you have. As soon as he goes sushi, uh, he controls the neutral completely. So, I, uh, step one, mm. I immediately disagree with this move. There's no real counterplay. It's like a that is a very good move, extremely strong move. Even though before the buff, I think it was one of the strongest, if not even the strongest move Lars had. Um, however, I wouldn't say he's controlling the neutral with that. Controlling the neutral is um, something... If you control the neutral, your opponent cannot do anything. But uh, you can still do something against the move. You can jab him out, which is obviously not too easy. But there's still a way to beat that, you know. The move is slow and uh, you, are, you can jab him out. How, however, I'm not like downplaying the character or downplaying the move that move is broken 100% it is broken and whoever like from the last players are saying ah oh, it's not uh, too crazy or it's what the move is broken guys let's be honest as a last player I have to say the move is broken it is way too strong and it shouldn't exist like this in the game especially not after the buff but let's just like let me see what he says afterwards. Dragon Lash, that's plus on block, super duper, homing, super reach, mid. Uh, there's nothing you can do. It's like a can Dragon Lash, except in Street Fighter, you have a four frame jab or you have a DI to fucking interrupt that shit on reaction. On we reaction. live with 10 frame jabs. And trying to power crush this, power crush this shit, <laughs> it creates problems of its own. So what. Okay, you cannot react to it. That's. That's right, you cannot like react and see and then jab. You have to like kind of predict it or like playing on keep, uh, like doing jabs as a keyboard. But the thing is, yeah, you're not like this move, obviously, you're not reacting to it, but keep out jabs won't kill you. Like, let's say you're doing a jab, what can Lars do to kill you from there? Maybe at the right timing, he's gonna do dynamic entry one, two, and then activates the heat but other than that he's not like gonna predict your jab and launch with punish you like with punish you with the launcher for it that's not gonna happen like most of the last if which if like he's trying to speak not on a top level or higher level but even at the top or higher level people will not see that you're doing a jab and launch you for it not consistently no way and um yeah, therefore at the lower level it's not going to happen anyways. So there is no high risk for you to do a jab as a keep out if you're on that range against Lars. And uh, the reward for you is if you catch the right timing, you can jab him out. 
So I think there is, as I said, a counterplay to it, but it's still a strong move, like a broken move. What did we have before this patch? We had something kind of neat. We were playing Tekken. As bullshit as Lars is in this game, in my opinion, again, he's not S tier, he's just cancer to play against. But, but that, was, that was very important what he said here, and I agree with that one. He is not S tier, he is not S tier, but he is cancer to play. That is 100% like the truth. I see it the same. When I play L against Lars in this game, I, I feel the same way as like... Sometimes I have trouble against this character because playing right against this character consistently in this game It is a bit hard especially like in the first two two But um, in Tekken 7 where Lars was not like bullshit and all of that where he was way like weaker I don't want to like talk too crazy or something, but in Tekken 7 I had no trouble at playing against Lars. It was for me. It was so easy whoever it was like it could be like the best last player it wouldn't like i wouldn't mind i could pick other characters i was doing good against character always consistently in this game i'm losing way more often even though like i adapted to the game i'm still losing sometimes against the character just because playing the matchup right consistently is not too easy because this character is way more cancer so i think that was uh, important what he said However, he's not he's not an S tier character. No way. In a game where Asusena is there, Dragonov, Ling, Jun, Fang, and so on, I can go on with like five more characters at least. Lars is not an S tier character. He's just so annoying to play against. But you were actually still Shout out to Fergus 2K8. Playing Tekken against Lars. But the developers did not like that, so they actually removed it. Let me explain. So Okay, you're saying you're saying you cannot play Tekken against Lars anymore. Lars did this move on you. Most of the time, you'd block. Oh, when so you block he does board. dynamic entry three. And now he goes into sushi entry. Sushi. And here <laughs> he will mix you up with a lazy Lars would mix you up with the low or the mid. Mm -hmm. This you can actually option select just like I showed you before with the orbital and monkey flip. But you wouldn't step right. As soon as you block that kick, if the Lars was lazy, you could punish him by doing step left duck, would beat both options, and then yet again, I would demon god fist to punish both of those options. Mm -hmm. So this was actually an option select on Lars's lazy 50-50 in this situation. So here, the Lars player had to actually play Tekken. He had to go, hmm, if I think he's going to option select me here, I do this. This would track you moving left and knock you down. Or worst case scenario, now it would never wall splat you, but it would knock you down and it would be neutral on block. So here, if you anticipated that the Lars player was going to try and beat your option select, by doing the free four, mm. you would step right. And Lars free four option loses to the tiniest step to the right. I think I'm getting what he's saying. So this, this is what is known as playing Tekken. It's about mind games and the defender has multiple options. That the aggressor have to keep in mind and try and get a read. Is he gonna try an option select or is he gonna try and counter the, my response to the option select? Yeah. We're playing Tekken, right? So wha what did they do? Well, they made it so that... And th this is so short-sighted. They even explained why they did this. They I'm getting what he's that. talking about. I'm just when gonna let him block, say the thing if you, first. If the defendant is in rage and has uh -huh. access to rage art, if he pops his rage art, he beats all of Lars's options. Ah, boo-hoo. When this <laughs> kick is already fucking AIDS. AIDS to handle. Oh shit. So for that rage art situation, they made it so that this kick on block now, this 50-50 I showed you, this, mm. there's no option select. There's nothing you can do. When you eat this kick on block now, you're so fucking staggered, you're locked down. He sounds a what bit I mad about it. To you, step left duck does not exist anymore. Lars no longer needs to do something smart to shut that down. 
mm -hmm. to counter your option select doesn't need this anymore no yeah. that's out the door they just made it so you have to take this 50 50. you have to take it so full screen fucking dragon lash on block and just take the mix up okay so what he's saying is um before what lasted dynamic entry three the last player had to guess do I go for the silent entry 1 or do I go for silent entry 3 plus 4? Is he gonna step left? Is he gonna step right? Or is he not gonna do anything and I can go for the low? Now you can just do whatever mid you want and whatever low you want. Because um, it's like they cannot step it anymore. So it's it becomes lazier and it becomes just a 50-50 and not taken anymore because you're not thinking uh, what the... Defender in that case is doing He is right about some parts, but uh, There are a few things that needs to be said though um, There are characters and not only like one two there are a lot of characters that can await Like these things they have like a backswing move they have like a power crush and uh, Then it becomes a mind game again. For example best example is Asusena. Asusena has forward one plus two the power crush heat engager which I still don't understand why these moves are in the game. Power crush, safe, high heat engager. But you can throw that out if you're doing dynamic entry 3 on block and beat all your mid options. So in order to beat that, you have to go for the low. And then you're getting a huge reward because it's a counter hit launcher. But then again, you can just low parry as well and you're dying for it. So it's like a 50-50 there. And it's like there's a real mind game going on in that situation. If the player knows the option same with other characters that have like a evasive move um but the thing with this here is i think saying that it is a that is a real 50 50 is a bit too much i think because obviously if you look at the lower level it's a 50 50 they're not gonna react to the low and yeah it's a 50 50 there but a 50-50, it's not a 50-50 at the top level. Like, I'm looking from the top level, for example. It's not a real 50-50 there. It is cancer to fight against, and it is hard. But you can kind of react to the move. Not always, not 100%, but you can kind of react to the low. You can fuzzy guard as well. It becomes really hard if you change up the timing. But then again, the last player is playing Tekken. If he's changing up the uh, timing... He is kind of playing Tekken again, because that's that's what Tekken is about as well, right? Changing up timings. But, um, yeah, I'm not saying, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, oh, just react to the low every single time you can do it. No, like, even if you're good against that, uh, it is still cancer to play against that move. But uh, it is possible, though. And now, compare this with characters that have, like, real 50-50s, where it's, like, impossible to react. Because I played against the best characters in the... Uh, not best characters. I played against the best players in the world in tournaments, outside of tournaments. And I can guarantee you say... Like, I can guarantee say to you guys, the low is kind of reactable when the opponent is on point and watching out. It is 17 frames, it says. But the low is not always, like, reactable because of the frames. Also because of the animation the sound, the noise they're making, and guess what? Top players, like top, top players, they are paying attention to all of that. And with my experience I had and playing against all these players, there are people that react to it like 80% of the time. And I'm not saying it's not good, it's still good, It's especially in like tournament env environment where people get like nervous and stuff, it's still extremely good. But imagine in a situation where it's like the final situation of a tournament and I'm going for the low like after dynamic entry 3 and I'm playing against I don't know let's say I'm playing against Arslan or another top player and at that moment he's uh, like paying attention even though he's nervous and that moment he's paying attention low parries my low on reaction and I'm dead so if he's ready on that in that moment I will lose if I go for the low 100% I will lose but Imagine I have a, uh, I have another character, for example, 
Asusena. I'm always saying Asusena because I think she's way too strong. She has a low, which is unseeable, and it's a knockdown as well. Not only like a low that hits and you have plus frames, it's a knockdown as well, like a unseeable sweep and a mid heat engager, which is safe. So if I'm Asusena in that moment, and I'm doing like the exact same mix up at the end, it can be Arslan, uh, Arslan, it can be Ni, it can be Atif, it can be the best player in the world. They have to guess. They cannot react to it. They have to guess. Even though they are like on point at the moment and like play like a robot, they still. So, what I'm trying to say is this move is 100% broken. It is 100% broken and way too strong. But the option is there that people that are on point, that people that know the matchup, can like do against it like to do something against it whether if it's doing a power crush whether if it's matchup specific whether if it's reaction they have some options to beat that or before you jab them out so it is still broken yes i'm saying this like a lot of times because i don't want people to comment and say like oh you're downplaying this character you're downplaying this move i'm not downplaying it this move they sh they should nerf it honestly they should nerf it but and that, this is very important. Before nerfing this move, or before nerfing Lars, they have to nerf the other characters first. Because everyone, like I've seen that on, on Twitter, everyone is crying about the dynamic entry 3 buff and be like, oh, this is way too strong and this is too broken. And yes, you're, you're all right. But like, is the game gonna be like perfect and saved after nerfing this move, after nerfing Lars, after nerfing dynamic entry 3? Are we all happy and can play ranked and have fun again? Where you still gonna see 90% of the times Asusenas, Dragonovs, Lynx and whatever. And they just ran over you with their broken stuff and their broken 50-50s which you cannot react, not option select, not do anything against that. Doing 1 million damage for guessing wrong one time. You guessed right 3 times, you're not getting any reward. You guess wrong one time and you die for it. That's how the broken characters are, like the broken bro broken characters. With Lars it's not like that, but not even close to that. And yeah, this is like um, what I think people should do. They should like calm down a bit more. If they really want to complain about the game and the balancement and like the 50-50, I think taking this as an example is not the right thing. They are like way worse characters, way worse characters and way worse 50-50s. But I still agree though that the move is way too strong and it shouldn't exist like that. They could have like the dynamic dynamic entry 3. Wait, let, let me finish the video first because it's almost finished. This is bad game design. This is straight up bad game design. Mm. And in my opinion, it's not Tekken. That's not Tekken. Mm. In my opinion. And all of that all of this intricate gameplay flushed down the toilet because of a rage art situation La lars in my opinion is the prime example right now of bad game design in tekken he is he's, he's, he's not the best game design but he's definitely not the, the worst or like that bad as a game design as i said there are way worse characters way worse 50 50s and um yeah, the, the change was unnecessary. Like the plus, make it from plus three to plus five was unnecessary. <coughs> and uh, all because of that, because of a rage chart situation. Yes, he's right about it. They could have made dynamic entry so that you can use the move and then just hold back and not go into the stance. The same as uh, down forward two, Lars has. Down for, Lars can do down forward two go into silent entry but he can also hold back and cancel the stance they could have made do uh, done this to like make people beat the rage up but they want to make it easy for the beginners they want to make it easy for the players they want people to win and they want like lower level people to win and therefore go for a mid or go for a low that's like their goal i don't think i'm being honest here like i don't need to like uh, lie or something I don't think the rage art like their how I can how can I say it like the point they said about the rage art I don't think that was the main reason they changed the move 
I think the main reason to change the move was to make it way more easier for the low lower levels to play the character. So they can just do this move and then go for mid or go for the low and whatever the opponent is doing, uh, they're gonna win the situation if they try to like step, press or whatever. They will the, the last play will always win. So it is way easier for the lower levels to play the character. I think that's the main reason why they changed it. Um, obviously because of the Rage scenario as well, but I think the main reason is just to make it way easier and make it a 50-50 game. Because this is what we got. Tekken 8 is uh, like a lot of 50-50s. He's in the lead. But God knows we have we have a lot of runner-ups like Dragonov, but I think Lars takes the cake in just poor fucking game design. Asusena mm. and Lars is just very disappointing. Very disappointing. He is mentioning Asusena like that. He's mentioning Asusena. Okay, um He is right, it is a like very like it's not the best change. It is not a change that had to be made. They could have done something better with it. But saying it's like he's taking the cake of like bad game design, I think that's too much. That's like one change which is not right. And um, yeah, I think they could have done it differently. But I don't think it's right to like complain about it the whole time because changing that back so people can step the stance again won't make the game good, won't make the balance mid, uh, you know, uh, back to how it was uh, in earlier Tekken games. I think Tekken had always like an issue with the uh, balancing. There were always characters that were, they were way too strong, but over time they like released patches and it got better and better in my opinion. In Tekken 8, Tekken 8 is still new, so a lot of characters are broken. I also don't like the last patch. Uh, uh, the last patch we got, I think the the changes were not right. But I hope and I believe, hopefully, like after Evil Japan, uh, the next big balance patch will be better. However, if they only like nerf last there, like only, and nerf the dynamic entry three and all the other crazy options that Azusena has, that Dragonov has, Ling has, Ling. I'm, I'm sorry guys, Ling, are you fucking kidding me? Like, please, <laughs> why are you complaining about last when there is like Ling in heat? What are you gonna do against, what is the option select against Ling in heat? Can someone tell me? I can, I can ask the best players right now, they, they wouldn't know as well. Because there is no option select. There is no option select. Nothing. And there are a lot of characters, Fang. There are too many things and the problem with the game or the problem with the balancement is that these top tier characters, uh, like the top five, top ten characters, they have everything. They have like, they have everything, every option to do in the game and you just have to take it. And when a, when a really strong player picks, the, picks a, up a character like that, yeah, good luck uh, and have fun. You can not, like, you can't do anything. Besides, like, praying. With Lars, though, it's definitely annoying, but um, you ha still have some kind of options. You can do keep out jabs if he's always doing dynamic entry 3. Uh, you can try to react to the low. If you cannot react to it, then, yeah, okay, then try to, like, guess. And uh, I don't think it hurts if you, if you don't duck. Like, the mid is way more scarier than the low. The low isn't that scary. It does a lot of damage and it's plus frames, yeah, but you rather eat the low than the mid. And um, if you have a character that, you know, where you can do evasive stuff to beat the stance, you can do that. So you have some kind of options, but other characters, where are the options for that? Where are the options for that? So how, why shouldn't, shouldn't we focus on, you know, I'm talking like I'm balancing the game. I'm not balancing the game. But why shouldn't we like saying or oh, this character and this character needs to get nerfed first because they are more like more of a problem right now. Ling, King, Asusena, Dragonov, Fang, June, all characters, all these characters 
are have way crazier 50 50s i mean june hasn't like doesn't have like a crazy crazy 50 50 with a low sweep or something but she she has other broken stuff but the uh, these the most of the characters have crazy 50 50s or like um crazy tools that that is like making the game unbalanced and last is only like the dynamic entry three which is annoying but you still have some kind of counterplay it's just not as good anymore as it was before the counterplay it's it, it is becoming harder but yeah i'm saying this at the end again because i want to finish this video it's still a broken move and it shouldn't exist in the game the buff or the the change was unnecessary they could have done it like otherwise uh, they could have just make it so you don't go into the stance just cancel the stance and it is way too broken it is way too strong way too broken and yeah however we need to get other characters nerfed first before getting last nerfed because it, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense if you nerf last and let the other characters like how they are it's still unbalanced and it's just making last weaker and the top the characters staying strong that makes no sense Nerf the other broken characters first, and then we can talk about, yeah, Dynamic Entry 3 needs to get nerfed as well. Because no one is saying, okay, there are some, there are quite a, f like, a lot of last players saying the, mo the move isn't uh, that crazy or something. It is like, I have to say it for my last brothers, uh, the move is broken, absolutely broken. And yeah, the main man is not wrong about it. Like... So many people or so many last players complaining about the video because he's like saying sushi stats and stuff. Like, see it from his perspective. He's fighting against last players. Probably like, um, he has a lot of experience. He played against last since years and he's still struggling against that. Not because he's not a good player. Because the main man is a good player. Like, I'm not saying this just to, you know, be like nice or something. I'm, I'm being serious. Uh, I, I, I watched him a long time ago. I think he improved. And uh, he, against Lars, you can still lose even though you are like, you have a lot of experience. Just because it's like more jarring to play against the character. More annoying to play against the character. And that makes a person feel bad about the character. Bad about the game. Because he's like, how... How am I forced into this situation constantly and all the time? Uh, it shouldn't be like this in the game. And that's why he's like roasting the character. But he always uh, used to hate the character. He always used to hate the character. In Tech and Tech Tournament 2, uh, he was roasting the character because the character was too strong. In Tech and 7, not anymore because uh, Lars was weak. And now, since he's strong again, he's roasting him again. But... Do I care about it? Not at all. Like, why should I care that he's roasting uh, a character? Like, let him have his opinion. If he doesn't like the character, he doesn't like the character. It's the same with me and King. I don't like King at all in this game. In Tekken 7, it was so fine. I had nothing against King. Now, King for me is like one of my most hated characters because I don't like the mix-ups. I don't like like it how much damage he does and all the all the buffs he got. I think it's way too much. And, uh, yeah, don't hate someone because he's hating your character. Because when it comes to hating characters, I hate almost every character in the game. So you shouldn't hate someone for hating a character. You should understand the perspective of the other, uh, you know, player. And uh, as I said, I don't think he's completely wrong. I just think it is a bit too much, a bit too much uh, talking about the character and Wanting him to get nerfed so bad where you should focus if you focus on on hating or like not hating But if you focus on nerfing a character or wanting a character to get nerfed There are at least at least ten other characters that need to get nerfed before Nerfing last that's my opinion So it's always like that in the in the game in the community that you get hate for playing a character I think People shouldn't care too much about it. I started with Tekken Tech, Tech Tournament 2, yeah? And I was not like a player that had, had a lot of experience or knowledge. And I was definitely carried at some point. I was getting hate mails after every single game. 
like I still have a lot of mails, like a lot of messages on my PlayStation 3. I could show you this. I I got a lot of hate mails, even like power graphs, you know. <laughs> People were actually like putting a lot of effort into these messages to let me know that the character is broken and I'm carried. But um, when I was younger, I, I was like feeling some type of way and I was like messaging them back and was saying like, oh no, I'm focusing on getting like understanding the game and this and that. But nowadays I don't care anymore. At some point I stopped caring. I didn't reply anymore. Then Tekken 7 dropped. Lars was one of the worst characters. All of a sudden everyone give, was giving me props. And after every game we're saying, oh, respect that you play Lars on this level, that you play Lars on this rank and this and that. All of a sudden everyone was, you know, saying like, oh, you're so good and this and that. And now we're back in Tekken 8 and people telling me again I'm carried. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not like, it's not gonna change. It's always the same. If your character is strong and broken, there are people that will say you are carried. And if your character is like one of the worst, People will say you are good and uh, you have fundamentals and all of that. You shouldn't care about it. At the end of the day, this game is there to have fun. And if you're like a competitive player like me, you are aiming to win. So you play to win. If you have a broken character, you use your broken tools, you use your broken character in order to win. Like, look at what Nii is doing. Look at what Arslan is doing. Look at all the top players look how they play the game they're using every tool in order to win because that is what it's uh, like to be a competitive player you want to win in tournaments therefore you have to use the broken tools and other than that you're just gonna have fun if you're not a competitive player you just try to have fun and you play the game and uh, yeah you shouldn't care too much about like what people say about your character or something i think we should be we shouldn't focus on that but yeah, that's my opinion on that. Um, I hope it was clear, like in this video, because many people asked about it. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I should do like more reactions like that if people are talking about Lars or just in general. But um, yeah, let's see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, I wish you a great day. Uh, Eid Mubarak to all my Muslim brothers and sisters. And uh, have a great day.